unshackled joy. Woo! Actually, we had a, we had a whole uh, kind of like a, a competition, and, and the congregation voted, and they chose to study a book of the Bible, and we're going to look through the book of Philippians and how to live a life of joy regardless of your circumstances. So we'd love to have you come back next week at 11 o'clock on the corner of North Line and 12th Street here in Windup. So, and before I introduce Fred, if you had any part, I know people are talking, it's hard to hear, but if you had any part in setting up or making this morning happen, if you could just stand up for a second, I want to honor you if you are part of the service. So stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Come on. All right, John, you should be standing. Julia, you should be standing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, guys. Thank you guys for making this morning happen and for being here um, to uh, just uh, allow us to meet in the park. So, so Fred to come on out. I'm going to read to you a little bit of a bio, and then um, he will come up and share his story with you. Now, Fred, uh, he says, My beautiful family consists of the love of my life, Wendy, married in 1999. That's awesome. Right before Y2K, Fred. That's awesome. Uh, daughter Whitney, 31. His son named Jer Jeremy, 26. And stepdaughter Marissa, 37. Uh, he, he is a licensed builder and licensed real estate agent. He's part owner of KDI, which we actually share a building with them. Really cool. And uh, they do you know, uh, uh, a lot of different custom bathrooms and kitchens. They do a great job. He also uh, does Faith Apartments and co-owns uh, Booth's pro uh, property with my daughter Whitney. And uh, the Faith, if you're not sure, the Faith Recovery Center is in Lincoln Park. And it's an awesome facility where people come and live on site to get off um, drugs and alcohol. And so Fred is very passionate. He's a, he's a generous man. Um, but what I love about him is if you get around Fred, you can tell he loves Jesus and he loves people. And I want you to know that you're, you're highly respected. And uh, many people look up to you. And uh, and I appreciate you willing to come up here and share your story. So one more time, give a welcome to Fred. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Wind Up Family Church. Am I on? Louder. Hello. Hello. Ah, uh, I gotta tell you, when Pastor Jerry, I've been asked to share my testimony for about. 20 years, and I've never did it, because the weakest part of me, the fallen part of me, is trusting the Lord enough to get up here and count on His grace to be able to do it, because on my own, I'm not capable of doing this, I don't enjoy doing this, I'm shaking so much right now, I'm sweating, I, I can it. it's just something that I'm not comfortable Pastor Jeremy asked me this time, I said, I think I got something going on that day. I, can't do that. I said, let me get back with you. So I went home and I talked to my wife and we prayed about it. We prayed about everything. And we prayed about it and I think, I said, you know, I, it's something I have to do. I think it's time. So this last month and a half has been one of the hardest month and a half in my life. Because I believe that, you know, God suppresses the things that He doesn't want us, the painful things that we forgot, that He doesn't want us to remember. And this last month, I've had to bring up them things. I've had to remember them things, and it hasn't been easy. I've snapped at my kids, which they thought had no idea because I haven't did it in years. I took it out of my wife. Because I remember the things that I'm going to share with you today. I called Windup Family Church a couple times to call and cancel and say that I just can't do this. It's too much. I can't do it. And I just kept praying, glorifying God and what He's did in my life and just trusting in Him through His grace. He is capable of doing anything. Yes. And I am so thankful to be able to stand up here and share with you today. Amen. start off and I'm going to make this quick because I can smell the hot dogs and stuff. I'll try to do this really fast for all of us. 
You know, I started out, uh, I grew up with alcoholic parents. Uh, my dad was very abusive. Uh, he took it out of my mom constantly. He took it out on his kids. He wasn't a very nice man, and, and, and I, I've forgiven him for that because his dad was the same way as his dad. Uh, my dad ended up committing suicide because of the way he was later in life. But he just wasn't a good man. He didn't treat us well. He always put us down no matter what we tried to accomplish. And, you know, as a son always wants to impress his dad, no matter what you did, he'd always put us down. He'd always tell us that, you know, it was the worst thing he ever did is have your kids, that you would never accomplish anything, and continue to do that our whole life. Well, growing up that way, obviously, when you get a little bit older, you want to you wanna bury that. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to have to deal with the thoughts that are going through your mind and the abuse. And so the first thing that uh, people go to usually is drugs and alcohol. I started drinking when I was about 12 years old because it was so readily accessible. And I continued doing that until I was about 14, 15, and I started doing drugs. At 16, I dropped out of school. I was thrown out of the house. I lived with different friends from time to time. I got into heavier drugs. And that lasted until I was 18. I went in and out of jails, smashed every car that I had. I finally went to prison for a short period of time before I got my GED. Thank you. And, uh, Uh, every time I got in trouble, every time I went to jail, every time I went into treatment centers, I would say, Lord, if you get me out of this, you know, hey, I won't drink anymore, I won't get high anymore, but nothing worked. So I finally, my third treatment center, I went into a Sacred Heart, and I was there, it was a 90-day program, I was there for two months just buying my time, trying to figure out, okay, where am I going to live, what am I going to do, where am I going to work, and there was a church service going on, and so I said, well, you know, like, I don't have anything else going on. I'm going to go hang out in the back. So I went in the back, and I, I'm listening. And back then, and, you know, my, my insecurities, my I, there was no way that I was going to walk in front of everybody and, and give my life to Christ. I crossed that line that day. They asked if anybody needed prayer, and I walked up, and I accepted Christ that day. And it wasn't anything special that happened. It's just I know now that was that's what took place that day because the next day I started opening up a little bit. I started sharing at meetings that you know I would never even share at. I had a new new feeling about life and what I was going to do, and that I really felt that I was going to stay sober after many many attempts. So when I got out, I had no place to live. My parents wouldn't let me come back home. And so I called my buddy up, and he says, yeah, you can come live with us. Where does he live? He lives above a bar. Wonderful. So here I'm clean and sober for the 90 days, and i got to go live up above a bar. But it was the greatest thing that ever happened because I got to witness and see and God's plan of who I was and where I didn't want to go back. So it really propelled me to uh, and, and helped me get sober. As I moved on in life, I started working, started making money, started a small little company. I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit. I used to sell candy, steal candy at the store and sell it to the kids at school. <laughs> but I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit. So, uh, sorry, bad thoughts. But, uh, so I started, you know, a, a small company and I was going to church, I was married, I had my two kids, I started working all the time trying to build this company. I built the company up large and made all kinds of money and money became my God. I stopped going to church, I stopped praying, I stopped searching Him and I thought the money would fulfill me. I got divorced because of it. I had to leave my kids because of it. 
but it didn't matter. It's what I thought was really important at the time. So after that, after a couple of years, I met my wonderful wife, who was a, a devoted, lovely Christian who just was my angel and still is my angel today. And I took a year off of work of that company, and I gave it. I can remember standing in my the one office we had three stores at the time, and I remember standing in that office. And looking around and people running around and doing things, and I and I can distinctly remember saying, "Lord, I wish this would end because it, you know it's so easy. I wish I could do it again." Just cocky and proud and, and arrogant. So within six months, I we had bought a new house and I wanted to take a year off, and I was pretty stressed out. So I took a year off. I gave the company to a manager that. I've only known for six months, but we used to go on seminars and he'd, he'd read the Bible to me. He would share scripture with me and I, and I just thought it was the right thing to do. And so I gave the company to him. I said, I'm going to take a year off. He ran that company and ran Battle Creek because that's where he was and we were opening up a store in Kentucky. And about a year in, he came to me and said, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't, I got to go home to my family. I can't run your company anymore. Uh... And he went back to Battle Creek to run that store. So I said, well, honey, I said, but, you know, I was, we had, we had started going back to church. We started praising the Lord again. We started worshiping. We started uh, getting involved. And I said, I'll go back, and, you know, and, and until I can get somebody else to run it. Well, when I got back, there was no money in the bank. There was a 300000 line of credit that was used. And we were paying payroll with deposits from jobs that we had just sold. Jobs that we had just sold with no money in it. So when I got involved, I went home and I shared this with my wife. And, and I can remember the first thing that she said is, you know, it'll be okay. And we prayed about it and we fell to our knees. And we knew that he would, he would take care. To this day... I don't think either one of us knows how that happened, how we got out of it, but we finished every single job. We never filed bankruptcy. We went through our life savings that we had saved, and it didn't matter. We sold a bunch of stuff that we had, and at that time, it just didn't matter to us anymore. And I should have did the bullet points like my daughter, the teacher, told me to do, huh? So many people told me what to do as my testimony today as my daughter's like, you got to put bullet points down because you're going to get up there and you forget. So you got to go to the bullet points. And then a couple other people, I just want to get off base here because I forgot all about that I was going to say. So I'm just going to go with it. Uh, and other people said, oh, just type your testimony down. So I typed up my whole testimony, my whole life, and I said, I'll just get up and read it. Well, that's pretty tough to do with about a ninth grade education is read in front of a bunch of people. So I knew that wasn't going to happen. So anyway, so we sold everything that we had. At that time, we had a 36-unit apartment complex that I put up for sale and did it aggressively. So it would sell to help us get out of this money crunch that we were in. And it wouldn't sell. We sold our personal house. We did a lot of things. But anyways, the 36-unit would not sell. We didn't understand why, but we know now why. We still own that 36 unit apartment building. And about two years after that, we started Faith Recovery Center, which started only through the grace of God. It wasn't a plan of mine. I didn't have this great plan. There was, uh, there was a couple guys getting out of treatment that I knew, that I hung around with, and I told my wife, I said, listen, I said, they need a place to stay, they don't have anywhere, Let us, let's just put them in our apartments, and uh, and we'll see what we can do with them, we'll try to help them, you know, <laughs> so that's what we did, we put a couple guys in there, uh, we let them stay there, I went there, and I shared with them, and I witnessed with them, and I shared the, the things that God had did in my life, and from that, uh, it, it evolved in what it is today, which is a recovery house that we help uh, people coming out of 
treatment centers, hospitals, prisons, homeless, and we, we house anywhere from 20 to 40 clients, residents on any given time, and it's just a, an incredible way for us to give back and see God working in people's lives, and it's, it's, it's just amazing. So I'm going to close because I forgot all the other things I was going to say. But as I'm up here, I'm just so thankful to be able to take the time, the talents, and the treasures that God gives us. Everything we own today, we don't take for granted. We are so humbled and so unbelievable honored to, to be able to have the things that we have. And, and we know it's through His grace and it's for His glory. Everything we do today is for his glory. Everything that he provides us, we try to give back as, as much as we can. Our day consists of every single day waking up, praising, worship, and glorifying him before we do anything else. We put our Lord first every single day. It always wasn't like that. We're all at different stages of our Christianity and our love for the Lord and where we're at. I just want you to know that if you just give that little mustard seed, that He will take that and He will use that and He will just make that grow into something that is unbelievable. He wants us to live an abundant life. He wants us, and I mean not abundantly finance or anything like that. The peace and the love and the joy that I have today and my wife has and my family has and my kids have are just absolutely amazing. And nothing is that going to come from anything else but the Lord. And I am just thankful. I praise Him. Amen. But tell us, tell us that how did you, how did you go from when you know you realized you had all the the finances, the, the issue, the business, and that closed. How did you get to the, the point of starting KDI? Because everybody knows KDI down river, and I know you didn't do it alone. I know you, you know you you have the partners that are huge. But but just tell us a little bit about that journey. Okay. Uh, that was a journey that. Uh, my wife's family all pretty much lost their jobs within six months. They, they were uh, working somewhere and, and uh, they needed jobs. So I said, well, honey, I said, we'll, we'll start a little company. It was in Lincoln Park. I said, you know, Dean's an architect and Joe's an IT guy and Jack's a builder, carpenter, do it all. I said, they got everything covered. I said, we'll just start a little company. This way everybody can make a living. And uh, so that's what we did in Lincoln Park, and that's where we started, but unfortunately I'm, I'm not one to do things small, or God had different plans, obviously, uh, and, it's, and it's turned into what it is today, and uh, which is a great company, and uh, we're just thankful that uh, we can take what God's given us and serve it and share with others. But I do want to, now that you brought that up, I remember some of my testimony. So, <laughs> I want to share about how we, we got involved with Wind Up Family Church. Uh, how we met uh, Wind Up Family Church. The, we were in Taylor and we were renting, renting this large building and we were looking for a building to buy. And there was so many obstacles. We didn't really think it was possible. One, it was you know too much money. Two, it needed too much work. And three, uh, we had a partner at the time that just didn't want anything to do with it. So I went back to the, to Wind Up Family Church many times, and I walked around that building, and I prayed about that building, and I just knew something in my heart that said, we need this building. I believe it was more for Wind Up Family Church than KDI. I still believe that today because uh, what I see here and what I see in the people and what I see pastors doing, and, and uh, Pastor James, I, I got a, not a little side note, Pastor James had inspired me to, to, to help me to get up here because Pastor James, when I get up and I see him and I talk to him at Wind Up Family, he is the meekest, mildest dude that you would ever meet. And through this, through this uh, uh, sharing my testimony, I watched him preach online. And what a different person. He was just amazing. He was, it was just the Holy Spirit in him sharing that, that just overwhelmed me. And I knew that if God can take this mild, meek person and, and allow him to preach the way he does, there's, there's nothing going to stop me. I don't care what it is. So he had a big part. I don't even know where he's at. But praise you. 
Okay. Anyway, there he is. Yeah. Okay, so back to line up family and buying the building. And so anyway, so I kept praying over the building and I went back a couple times and uh, praying about it and said, Lord, I really believe this is the building that we need. I believe that this is the Lord calling me to wind up family, to be able to give back my time, talents, and treasures. And a few things happened. One, one of the partners that we had decided that he wanted to go on his own, and we were opening another store in Novi. And he, he decided he wanted to go on his own and open his own, run that store. So that alleviated one of the obstacles. The second obstacle was it was just too much money. We couldn't afford it. The numbers didn't add up. And lo and behold, they lowered the price uh, uh, a, a good amount. And so that made it affordable. The work, the money that we spent, well, we're still doing that, aren't we? <laughs> but that's okay because it's for God's glory. And we know that there's something special for this. Uh, I love the people here at Wind Up Family Church pastor and the things that you do in the community. I will continue to support Wind Up Family, pray for Wind Up Family, pray for everyone here. And anything else you got to force me to say up here? <laughs> He's asking to get down, but um, not yet, not yet. If you guys could just extend a hand to him, we're going to pray for him, um, and uh, then, then you can get down and do that. All right. uh, Father God, I thank you for Fred and his willingness to obey you and share his story on the stage. Lord, we know that it wasn't easy, but what a great example that you call us out of our comfort zone all the time. But I believe there's, there's people in this uh, pavilion and in this park right now, God, that maybe you're calling them to do something and they're afraid, but God... Let me be encouraged today that, that when you um, are guiding God, you are providing, and that you just simply want us to trust you completely. So God, I pray that you would stir hearts today. Lord, I pray for Fred and Wendy and their team. I thank you for them, Lord, their, their love for you, their generosity, their obedience and faithfulness. And I pray that you continue to guide them, continue to give them favor, continue to move mountains in their lives, continue to reveal your glory to them. And I pray that the desires of their heart, even things that have not been uttered publicly, Jesus, you are aware of them. And I pray that you would, God, make their path straight and provide for them because I know they will honor you and please you and serve you, God, and give you all the glory. God, we pray your blessing on Fred today. Lord, may he enjoy these hot dogs. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> amen. All right. Well, guys, we're so glad that you've enjoyed us. And I do want to encourage you, if you have never crossed the line into a relationship with Jesus before, you can do that today. You don't have to, we don't have to be in the church building. We don't have to have any kind of special thing going on. Just find uh, somebody that, that looks like they're involved here at Wind Up Fam. You can find me. You can find Michael. You can find Fred. Um, Dave Kostelnik up here, raise your hand, Dave Kostelnik. Yeah, you can find Dave, Dan, and just say, I, I want to cross the line. And I'm telling you, they'll pray for you. It's the best decision you could ever make. Um, I, I do uh, want to speak just to Wyandotte family uh, only. Is uh, Thank you for your faithful tithes and offerings. Obviously, we're not a typical, normal uh, Sunday setting where people give their tithes. But whether you're giving on the app or we have an offering box in the back, thank you for your faithful tithes and offerings there. Um, I'm going to pray uh, for the food, and then we'll go ahead and um, we're going to kind of line up. The tables are in the back of the